This week at the Off Grid Cabin, we are working on our shipping container. The shipping container is going to be our solar hub and our water collection site, as well as a great storage area for all of our tools and odds and ends that we're going to need for future projects to come. It's so heavy. Need a pry bar. We're good. I'm sure I can cut it. Oh yeah, I can move it now. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. 95 and a half. Okay. We're going outside to outside. Uh, go to the center. Okay, bring it out towards you a bit. All right, so our footprint is fine. We're gonna fit on here, so that's good. Yep, that'll work. Okay, bring it over to you a little bit more. Yeah, we'll fit. All right. We will fit. Just a ballpark. Should be eight inches. Yep, yep, yep. And, yep, all right, eight inch square. Okay, so I finally got an oxyacetylene unit. Never had one. Used them, but never had one. I've used them very limited. And the idea is, one, I need it for cutting large stuff where I can't bring my plasmy cutter because I don't have my plasmy cutter here right now. I could have gone and bought the same circular saw, metal cutting circular saw that I have at home, but I don't need two of them. And this is another capability. So figured I'd get the oxyacetylene unit instead of a saw that I already own. Um, I went with Flame Tech because they're cheaper and they're compatible with Victor. And they actually make a lot of the pieces for Victor. So you get essentially Victor quality, current Victor quality, if not a little bit better for a fraction of the cost and it's compatible so 
If I can't find flame tech tips, I can get victor tips. Like this is a victor tip. Okay, torch is made. Okay. It came with some nasty little straps that aren't going to hold paperweight, so I'm going to use a ratchet strap like I do on my welding cart. Okay, so I mentioned I have very seldomly used an oxyacetylene unit, and every time I do, or have, it's been someone else's rig. And they're just kind of like, oh yeah, here's, you know, it's already set up, boom, go, go. Well, I got one of these little guys, the little Victor cards. I think it's mainly a tip chart. Based on the thickness, we're going quarter inch, so we're using a double lot tip. Slow, fast cut, so 20 or 25 on the PSI for the oxygen, preheat, 3.5 oxygen, and then the acetylene pressure, 3.5. Well, I guess I'm gonna figure out if these things are shut off. Kinda sorta think, if I remember correctly, that the these guys are backwards. So like left to tighten, yeah, right to loosen. Say, I wanna say that's right, we'll see. Okay, so that's, I was wrong. It's, it's the correct way, it's that way. Standard. Normal. Yep, okay. Can use we can we can try to once we get it in position and on top of it I can figure out a, a jacking situation or something so that we don't have to have the excavator hooked up and up in the air all the time we may be able to use the I mean, I'm sure we can use a high lift jack to lift up one side of this thing because yeah. it's only 4200 pounds yeah 40 sorry 4800 pounds it'll be quite the feat to with you as my helper not Giving you crud. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. You don't have a lot of you don't have a lot of power right now. Oh, on her spurs. <laughs> so, like manhandling the thing in position is going to be interesting. I might have to have you in the excavator. 
I'm just saying. Do you have a helmet or something? I'm more afraid of my hands. I'm just going to do or, right. or a Or a chest plate, maybe? That's like the people that wear helmets. I mean, I know why you wear a helmet skydiving. It's just so that you can exit without hitting your head. But otherwise, it's not helping you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What you got there? Chains for lifting. These are from the old harbor faint. Everything is set up. Now we just need to figure out how this thing's going to move once we actually lift it. So we're going to do a test lift, see how it goes, and then make a plan for where we actually want to drag this thing from. So we're going to go for the big lift here in just a minute and what we're doing differently this time is we've got the bucket repositioned and we're going to use three chains instead of four. We're going to put one on each short side going from short side to short side and then connect them in the middle with one It'll as many times as it needs to for us to get our desired height make it as short of a lift as possible so that hopefully it doesn't turn. Watch out. So my plan for this this one uh -huh. is I'm going to get it up and over. I want to be floating over the rear ones. Okay. I'm 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 in between. I'm, I'm not in I'm not at the front ones yet because the front ones are much higher. Mm -hmm. But I want to be floating over the rear ones in position to just do a last lift and set it on those. Okay. Okay? All right. <laughs> so she did it. Yeah. Good job. This is why you buy the biggest one you can. <laughs> So this can be the first shim. 
I may end up just using the plates that I have cut already to be shims because I, I need probably an inch. So that's three quarters of an inch. So our original eight by eight squares that fit perfectly inside of our 12 inch footers aren't gonna work. The corner castings on the shipping container are almost this size. So by the time you put this underneath, you don't have any room for an anchor. The whole point of these plates was to allow a place for an anchor and to spread the load of the corner castings as much of the footer as possible. Let me put my silly uh, catter, what do you call it? Cutting things on. So what I'm gonna do is kind of what I was planning on doing initially. Which this is the same size as the footers. And I'm gonna freehand cut these out. This doesn't really matter all that much as far as prettiness, it just needs to work. There's one. too bad for freehand all right four more of those or three more of those yeah Woody hopped back in the excavator and lifted the container off of the footers so that he could place the new circles underneath each of what will be the four feet. This will allow him to put anchors in and get this thing permanently set. Okay, so we're gonna do a center of all these. Gotta get my, my uh, almost said my towels, my hand towels, my gloves. Okay. Okay, so I got my hole. There's one. That one. 
That one's not so pretty. That one will go in the back. I think it'll go to here. Not too shabby looking. It'll go here. And this one. Here. Okay. Come here, Dave. Come here, butters. That's a good boy. This week we managed to get the container moved up onto its new footers and in place, which means that next week he can do two more holes over there for our other posts for the overhang itself. And then we can start building the roof. Yep. So first steps for me are gonna be uh, getting the welder set up and welding these corner castings right here. They just disperse the weight over the from the container foot all the way around the uh, footers. And then, yeah, measuring off, hopefully, as best I can for the footers on the roof over here. But this week, my dad will be in town, so you'll have a little bit of help um, <laughs> from a not a pregnant lady. The extra muscle should help, plus the excavator to lift all of these giant pieces of steel because we really want to get this thing done as soon as possible and get our solar panels up and be able to really get set up in the cabin before the baby comes. Mm -hmm. Just getting the roof done, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff after that. <laughs> like even when, the, <laughs> even when the solar panels are mounted and we put the inverter and the charge controller and the batteries in here, still got to bring the cable over there and do all the wiring in the house. So, yeah. Yeah. But I think we're making really good progress for it just being the two of us and really mostly him. So. And David. <laughs> so helpful. He's so yeah, helpful. Yeah, Wade's so helpful too. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's so helpful. Yeah.